Finding Happy, Seven Steps to Relationships That Will Not Steal Your Joy is the new book by me, Nikita Banks, a licensed psychotherapist and life strategist. Leverage the knowledge you'll receive in this book to help you with the process of obtaining absolute clarity through the use of guided self-exploration. This process is necessary to help you master all your relationships in 2019 and beyond. Go on Amazon.com or BlackTherapistPodcast.com and grab your copy of the book guaranteed to help you redesign all your relationships based on two basic principles, health and happiness. Get your copy today. Welcome to the Black Therapist Podcast. The Black Therapist Podcast is a podcast where we discuss the unique issues people of color face when dealing with mental health issues and mental health diagnosis. Now, if you are new to our show, I am your host, author, life strategist, and psychotherapist, Nikita Banks, in private practice in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. I am available for both psychotherapy and coaching sessions, and you can find more information about that on my website, NikitaBanks.com. You can listen to our podcast everywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pippa, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and BlackTherapistPodcast.com. If you are a mental health advocate or a therapist and you want to buy our podcast merchandise, you can do so by visiting our site. And if you want access to our free mental health tips, free online trainings, discounted selective services, and resources, do so by joining our mailing list by texting "get happy" all one word to six six eight six six. If you love the podcast, please like, comment, and share. We love to hear from you, and if you want to send me some feedback, guest suggestions, or simply to say hey, you can contact us at our website, BlackTherapistPodcast.com. Please be mindful that this episode and all of the information that we provide here is just a resource and a tool to help get you started on your mental health journey. If you are feeling any mental health distress or you are having any significant issues, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can find you a mental health provider in your area. Okay, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to our show. Okay, um, (laughs) start off with, um, but, um, This week has been very challenging for me. I feel like every week I'm saying that now, but we're getting at the home stretch of my year. Uh, I hired a assistant earlier in the year. I'm actually interviewing for a second, possible third assistant. I think I want to hire two people now, but I realize like not having a team um, and not having... I have systems in place, thank God. And a lot of what I was doing was automated, I should say. But putting my my attention back into my own business has been something that I have to do. I have to do. And I've I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of been trying to manage my workload so that I'm not overwhelmed but there are like benchmarks that I need to hit in my business there's revenue that I need to make in my business in order for me to feel secure and it's tax season so I had to like file my taxes and get all of that done and gather all of that do my my billing and everything in my office and my office manager quit she got a better job but I won't say better job. She got a different job because it's nothing like working for with us. But I like immediately had a meltdown <laughs> when I found out. And then at my consulting job, the, like the best supervisor in the world, she ran the program after six years, she's leaving. And so it was just like so much change happening for me that I've had to like really pull myself together. And it's been a challenge. I will say that outside of that, you know, I'm probably going to try to go to the beginning of March, the end of March, beginning of May with the, the shows. I'm not really sure when I ended the season previous years. I guess I got to look. If you're a long time listener of this show, you know that I take usually the summertime off because when the show first started, I was recording in my son's room. I don't do that anymore, 
but he's graduating from school and he's coming home. And so I really want, wouldn't do that even if I could because he'd be there and yuck. <laughs> um, and so now I'm really just trying to like navigate when I'm going to end this season so that I can do some of the other projects that I need to do um, and things that I want to launch in the business. And so I hope to give you guys at least four more shows that are like live and current. But I would really like to speak to some psychology students. A lot of psychology students and social work students have been reaching out to me. A lot of social workers or therapists that listen to me. I would like for you guys to reach out to me because if I can fit it in without overwhelming myself, I really want to start reaching out to some of you guys to get you guys on the show again. I liked having guests. Uh, sometimes it wasn't fun, <laughs> depending on who came on to the show. Cause I don't like foolishness. Like there's been sometimes I've I've had guests who have come on the show and they really hadn't listened to the show and they didn't know my personality or like what they were getting into. And I'm always respectful. This is my dream. And if you're supporting my dream and my vision of helping people of color normalize the therapeutic experience, like I'm never going to be disrespectful to anybody, but I've had some interesting people say that they want to be on the show and they've never heard the show. They're not familiar with the format. They're not familiar with me as a person or what I do. And so if you are listening to the sound of my voice and you would like to be on the show, please send me an email at blacktherapistpodcast at gmail.com because I would love to try to incorporate more guests onto the show. Now, the reason that we haven't really done that is because post-production and producing a show where Let's say sometimes the person speaks over me. I speak over them. They cough. There's background noise. To edit all of that stuff out, it takes me much longer to produce the show. And sometimes there's a delay on their part. And sometimes there's a delay on my part. Like it was just really hard to do production wise. And I pretty much do all of this stuff by myself. I, I am my researcher. I am the host. I am the producer. And so it was very difficult. I'm hoping I can only cross my fingers now that the kid will be home. Um, hopefully he'll be home because he's interviewing for jobs all across the country. But I would be able to utilize him to help me with the production because it would make things a lot easier for me. But there's that. Um, I had a few questions, but I've, I've put out to you guys questions so if you guys are not familiar, we're doing the, the Thursday live sessions again. And basically, if you have a health and wellness or a relationship question, you can ask me, send me an email at blacktherapistpodcast.gmail.com and I will answer your question. So I had a question here that I wanted to answer from somebody. I'm not going to give her a name because it felt real personal but here it goes I'm writing in because my boyfriend works a lot and I think he uses that to get out of doing things with me sometimes I feel like he uses that as an excuse not to participate in things we live a great life so I feel like I can't say anything about work because I do enjoy the finer things in life which he reminds me of anytime I bring it up how do I get him to balance work and home life without adding more stress into his already stressful career? Um, I got questions about this email, so I'm not really sure if I can answer specifically for this person. A, I don't know her and B, I don't know him. So I don't want to make any assumptions, but let me take this from where I have the questions. My boyfriend works a lot and I think he uses that to get out of doing things with me. Why? Why do you think he's doing that to get out of doing things with you? I mean, if he's actually factually going to work and you believe him and you trust him, then why do you take it personal if he has to go to work and you think he's using work to avoid stuff with you? 
and what kind of stuff like are you asking him to do things that you know that he doesn't want to do so he could just say oh well you know what i can't do it i gotta work i mean men for the most part usually don't like confrontation so he may very well be using this as an excuse or he may take his role as a provider very seriously and he may want to just simply provide for you and he may you know maybe there are financial goals that he has in mind maybe there are life goals that you guys have been talking about that he wants to achieve and maybe that's why he works so much and it's not about you everything is not about us like I think that that's the thing that women have a hard time putting into perspective like I literally told my best friend this the other day like I don't even remember what we were talking about Oh, I asked him, I'm see I'm getting off topic right quick. But I asked him to ask his friend who I met to give me a call because I needed some advice. And a week went by and the got the friend didn't call me. And so I called him again and I said, "Hey, did you ask so and so to to give me, you know, a call?" And like really before I could get it out, he's like, "Yes. You know, I did ask." It's on my mind. I called him. He didn't call me back. And I was like, okay. And he's like, but I didn't forget about you. And I was like, I want you to know that I'm not taking it personal. Even if you did forget about me. Because life doesn't revolve around me. But that's why it's important to me. So I'm calling to see if you A, did it. Or if you didn't do it, B, to remind you. Like it's not, everything is not about me. So it's very possible that whatever's going on with your boyfriend is strictly about your boyfriend and has nothing to do with you. So that's the first question I have. Sometimes I feel like he uses that as an excuse not to participate in things. Again, what things? And it seems like maybe you have trust issues because you brought it up twice. Like, why don't you just ask him if this is an excuse? Because you're asking me, I mean, I'm just... It's not an accusation, but I don't know him and I don't know you. Like the only way to find out what your boyfriend is thinking is to ask him. And if you don't trust the answer, then you have your answer. Like if you can't trust what he says to be facts, then you need to reevaluate that situation. Okay, we live a great life. So I feel like I can't say anything about work because I enjoy the finer things in life. Why? I mean, my dude had money, lots of it. I complained all the time about <laughs> about time. I always complained about time. I want time. I want more time. I want more intimacy. And I'm not the kind of girl that needs time all the time. Because you see, I ain't really got a lot of time. Like, I'm very short on time, but I'm really long on quality time. I'm long on time that is me time time that is planned for me not the drive by time hey I was in Brooklyn I just want to see you not the hey I'm, I'm flying to New York right now I, I'll see you because in between my meetings I mean this Saturday at six o'clock you know it's just me, you and me like time that's pre-planned just for me time and I don't think that you know unless you are like this is change of life money. This is Oprah money. I don't understand why you feel like you can't say something unless this life that he's affording you, he's affording you completely and you can't maintain this life without him or you're not contributing to this life. Like I, I, I don't understand why you you're in a relationship with somebody where you can't say what you want to say. And I'm strictly going off of what's, you know, six lines of this email. Like, this is not like an accusation. If you are listening to the show, this is not a matter of me making a judgment because I can't judge what I don't know. But just basically going on what you wrote here. Sometimes I feel like this is an excuse, which you mentioned twice. You think that he doesn't want to do things with you, which is something twice. That's a trust issue. That's a you don't believe him issue. That's a maybe there's been an infidelity issue or maybe you've been cheated on before and don't have nothing to do with him. He could be a very good, loving, hardworking man. He clearly is providing for you according to what you're saying. But 
can you enjoy the finer things in life if he works less? Because if my partner works less, I can still enjoy the finer things in life. Like that's not going to slow up my, my lifestyle any. I might not get as many red bottoms and bags and whatevers, but I'll live. You know, there's always credit. My credit is good. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, that's a thing. And then you're like, how can I get him to balance work and home without adding more stress to his already stressful career? Um, If he doesn't see it as a problem, you can't. Like, you can mention it. But if he doesn't define it as a problem, if it's not a problem for him, even though it's a problem for you. And if he doesn't see your problems as his problems, then you're going to have to find something else to do with your time or you're going to have to figure out if you could scale back on those finer things in life or you could provide those things for yourself and for him if he decides that he's going to take more time off. Um. So yeah, that's, that's the answer to that question. Uh, somebody was a student. They asked me a question about finding a psychology gig for the summer. And I thought it was a really good question. She's already applied for certain um, grants and research projects that she's looking to do in the summertime. And she's like, if she doesn't get those opportunities, did I know somebody um, and my answer was no, because I don't know where she is in the in the country. And I, I mean, without really knowing the student, I can't like reach out to people and say, hey, I know this student from Instagram. That doesn't really work. Right. But my advice to her is my advice to any student that's listening to my voice. The thing that you could could do and should be doing is going on psychology today, looking at profiles of therapists or psychologists or social workers or whatever it is your your discipline is and ask them if there is summer internship opportunities call local organizations either that you have participated in that you know about that um you know maybe family members or friends or whoever has benefited from or they've worked with and just ask them if you could get a summer internship. Call the director and ask them if you can go to lunch to pick their brain. You know, send them a nice letter. Hi, I am a, you know, social work student in my th my second year of my BSW. I'm researching social work careers and I would really like to have coffee with you. I would really like to take you to lunch because I, you know, I'm looking for information about possible career opportunities, or I'm looking for informations, information about ways that I'll be able to like utilize the degree when I graduate. I think everybody knows the challenge of starting out without network, a network or those connections that, that are necessary for us to be able to get what we need. And so I suggest that you start networking now. Every single school has a alumni page. They're all Facebook pages about all kinds of things. I know in NYU, when we graduated, there was an NYU Silver alumni page. Columbia has one. Um, so I suggest that you utilize those, those resources. Like I said, go on psychology today. And what I like about psychology today is because the therapists up there are black. Go on therapy for black girls, melanin me mental health. Um, if you're looking for somebody who is culturally responsive and just ask them, email them from the sites and ask them, you know, first ask them to pick their brain. First, tell them that you admire what they do and why the community is necess it's necessary in the community and you know then just ask them if you could have coffee ask them if you can i don't know see the facility where they where they work ask them if you know 
if there are any internship opportunities. I mean, you could just go ahead and ask for an internship. I personally, I'm just trying to think if I would respond if somebody said, hey, could I be your intern? I mean, at this point in my life, the answer might be yes, because I got so much going on. But you get what I'm saying? Like, try to build some sort of rapport and relationship with them prior to the big ask. But that's the only way that you'll be able to do that. And even if they say no, keep in contact with them. Uh, Reach out with them or reach out to them over the coming months or just update them. I have a guy who emailed me. He asked me some questions about starting a podcast and different things that he could do with his with his MSW degree. He was an alumni at Silver. He was like, he liked what I do. You know, could I give him some career direction? And we didn't meet, but I was able to answer his questions via email. And then he emailed me back and was like, hey, I took your suggestions. This is what happened. You know, this was very valuable for me. I hope we can keep in contact. And I was like, yeah, because I was more invested because I had already given him advice. He took my advice. That advice was successful. And he was able to like turn that into a situation. And so if you are a recent grad or upcoming grad and you are looking into uh, see what your career options are in the field, that would be my advice to to you. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, you can email me at blacktherapistpodcast.com. If you have any feedback or social suggestions, if you want to be on the show, email me if you want my book. It's on Amazon. <laughs> Finding Happy Seven Steps to Relationships That Will Not Steal Your Joy. And if you want to take our free mental health course, one of them, because I have two now, you can also text get happy to 66866 okay this thursday at 3 p.m we will be going live again for our real rap relationship rap session series i think that's what it's called i don't really remember but um oh yeah real rap relationship whatever whatever i just said i'm I'm tired um and this week the topic will be about choosing the content of your relationship. So this is directly from my book. This is, I think, chapter three, I guess. I don't know. Um, But we're going to talk about how you can choose what you engage in in relationships. I think we, we have this big old cancel culture right now where everybody's like, oh, I'm not messing with so-and-so, he's canceled. Or I'm not messing with... So and so he's canceled. I guess last week was Kodak Black. I got opinions, but I'm gonna keep it to myself. This week was YG. I got opinions. I'm gonna keep it to myself. But like we have to start thinking about behavior that is like beyond redemption, and if there is any, and if there is not, right? Like even if there are acts that we may deem as unforgivable I say in air quotes which you can't see because it's radio and not TV it's not TV but it's something that was unforgivable if we could still decide to love that person anyway and just not allow them into certain areas of our lives because I personally think the last straw for me in any relationship is for you to not speak to me Um, if you cut off all ties of communications with me that means that you don't give a hell you don't give a damn. You, you're not you're not emotionally mature enough to resolve issues. Your communication skills sucks suck so bad that you don't even want to put them to the test. You can't even communicate to me what the problem is. You are not interested in in finding a solution or working together to find a solution. That is one thing that grinds my gears. So if you ever want to get on my bad side. Stop talking to me completely. And if you've listened to this show in the past, you may know that if you stop talking to me completely, I may show up on your doorstep. I may even get on a plane and do it, which I've done before. Don't judge me, but yeah, I may show up. So, um, you know, we have to start thinking about the things that we want to engage and what we want to invite in our lives and make intentional relationships. And so, 
I'm looking forward to speaking on that this Thursday at three o'clock. Now I had to work last Thursday, but I'd still got the live in. I was unable to put the replay up because I don't know. Instagram was tr doing me very dirty, but this Tuesday I'll put the Instagram live up from last week. And if you've missed any of our past rap session series, which I think there should be four episodes up before last week which will be five if you've missed any episodes you can go to our instagram tv and the the link is there okay okay so guys we winding down we winding down to our third season i think we have over 60 episodes at this point um i'm gonna try to push myself a little bit more so that i could at least get some more episodes in the bag so that we'll have some fresh stuff at least until June, July. That's what I really want to do till June, July. Take August off and September off and come back, you know, before my birthday sometime, which is in October. So first first few weeks of October. So if I could come back like middle of September with school, like New York City school system, I would be very happy for that, but we're going to see. So if you are a therapist under the, the sound of my voice, you can hear the sound of my voice and you want to be on this show, please feel free to contact me at blacktherapistpodcast at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Be well. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Once again, you can follow us on all our social media sites at Black Therapist Podcast on Instagram and on Twitter, as well as Black in Therapy on Facebook. Or you can follow your hosts, me, Miss M-S-N-I-K-I, thanks, on Instagram and Twitter, as well as you can find out any information about me at Nikita, N-I-K-I-T-A, banks.com, and on the show's website, Black Therapist podcast.com and don't forget if you want to send us any general feedback show suggestions uh show topics or guest ideas please feel free to drop us an email at blacktherapistpodcast at gmail.com thank you be well